Okay, the uh, the hawthorn fly. Some people call it a big black gnat, but um, it's um, it's a, it's a big biggish black fly, um, similar in appearance to the house fly, but is distinguished by uh, its pair of long legs, which uh, which hang down when it's in flight. It's a terrestrial fly, and that means it's from the land. Um, terrestrial, we've all heard the expression terra firma, which uh, terra means land, as, as, as you know. Um, it puts in its appearance in our part of the world, on the Ogmur and the Iweni, in about April. And is around, is about until mid-May, something like that. Uh, it shows up again in September. Um, you will see it swarming around uh, riverside bushes, especially the hawthorn bush, from from which which it gets its name. <laughs> um, the hawthorn bush produces its blossom uh, in May, about May anyway. Uh, the blossom is called a May blossom, as as you probably know, and um, this is probably because anglers see this fly dancing around the, the May blossom, the hawthorn blossom. It's been referred to as a mayfly, which can be very uh, very misleading to, to newcomers. It's not a mayfly at all. Now, it's a very inefficient flyer, and um, it often gets blown onto the water. Um, being a land fly, a land-bred fly, it's unable to shed uh, water like um, a water bread fly and um, it gets waterlogged, waterlogged and it means it, it sits very low in the water when it finds itself on the river and this is why sometimes not always I trim the hackle underneath just like that to, to, to let it sit down um, although it's seen around the river uh, you can also see it up on the um, around the gorse, miles away from a river. I've even seen it along the side of the dual carriageway in Northampton. Uh, so th that's really it. It's a land land bred fly. Okay, I'm going to use a black silk which I have already waxed. Okay, uh, the hook I'm using is a dry fly, a light wire hook, size 12, because it's a, a, a biggish, a biggish fly. Well, size 12 is, is quite big. Now, the rib. Rib is optional on this fly, but I like to use it, and I like to use a holographic. I've really taken to it, so I'm just going to cut a bit off this reel here. Just bear with me. It's a fine holographic rib. Uh, it's up to you if you want to use it. It doesn't matter too much. I, I like it and I, I think uh, I, I've had success with it on. It somehow gives the impression of light shining through the body, <coughs> which um, the trout seem to, uh, seem to like. Now that's the rib. The body is peacock hurl. Uh, ordinary peacock curl like this. Now I've got four strands here and we all know they get a bit brittle near the tip so I'll just nip those off and tie the four strands in. Let's draw them back a little. You can use one, two, three or five. It doesn't really matter too much but we want to sort of fairly Plumpish body, not not uh, too plump. Okay, as we wind the hurl, I draw my fingers down to bring out the flue. I'll just wind this on now. Peacock hurl is a bit brittle, so what I will do, should have thought of it before, I'm going to put some varnish on the shank. This will help to help it to stick and will make it a bit stronger. Not everyone does it, you don't have to do it, but if I give you the options, it's up to you. I get the four strands and I hold them. Some people twist them and form a rope. 
some people wind them around the silk uh, you can do that if you if you wish I think this is a as good as any just to wind them like this uh, peacock curl as you know is a lovely material and it um, does have an attraction for trout if I draw them down okay that's the body on which I now just secure like that nip off the surplus enough for a couple well for another fly anyway there so I'll just put that to one side in fact um, that which I nipped off can be used for the legs I'll talk about <coughs> the legs now the legs as shown on this one you can use anything for the legs any dark feather really uh, and I gotta be honest the color of the legs appears to make little or no difference to the effectiveness of the fly because I think the fish look up from underneath and they see it silhouetted against the sky um, anyway I've got some legs here which I'm going to tie on um, these are from a, 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 just a black hurl feather but you can use this um, this is our stretch and you simply you, you, you want a joint really in it so we simply tie a knot like this See if this is coming out on the camera. Just tie a knot to give a sort of a leg, a sort of a leg joint like that. You see that? You can use any sort of hurl. I don't know if the camera missed that, but that's the type of thing we, we need to give a joint like that. I've got a couple tied up here, uh, which I've prepared so I'm going to tie them on as soon as I've ribbed the body right I've secured that and now going to rib it and I'm going to rib it the opposite way uh, so I went over with the peacock curl so now I'm going to go under just like this as I say this is optional only about three ribs I'm keeping the body a little bit short because I've got a few bits to put on it yet My movements are a bit restricted with the camera, so I ask you to bear with me. Normally I'd belt around with this, but um, this isn't a camera. I don't, I don't want to spoil your view. Okay, got the rib on. So now we're going to come to the legs. Cut off the surplus. Legs like this see the knee joint don't want to be too long we just tie one on like this give it a bit of a position something like that I'll nip this a little bit off and this is the other one a bit like a hopper don't know if you've tied hoppers um, but um, similar sort of thing I like to get them like this if I can because when the fly is on the water it's supported by these legs okay I'll just nip this off and I'll tilt it a little bit just to show you what I'm trying to achieve do you see that angle of those legs there are they showing up okay although the fly when it's flying the legs hang down obviously when it's on the water they're out straight right now that's the legs now as I say you can use ostrich hurl you can use peacock hurl like this for these legs you can use whatever you you wish really peacock hurl very good uh, I showed you ostrich hurl earlier 
this one is peacock curl and you just cut him to the length you want um, so that, that's um, that's the legs now the wing again the wing is optional the wing I'm going to put on for you to show you is cut from a hen feather like this um, again pressing down with the wing cutter down like that this is a blade little blade on the wing cutter with a gap there for the quill to come through and you press down on a piece of paper and when you cut it it comes out like this and you've got one wing like this you see that wing okay now what I do now is and a bit off like that and I get my hackle pliers hold it like that draw these down like this and I cut across that little waist I call it a waist that little narrow part there just bear with me while I do that before I I don't need to fall on the floor I cut across there and I draw it back and you get that sort of wing which goes on now we're trying to imitate a housefly type of wing but I don't think it matters all that much I'll tilt it to show you the wing that's the wing can you see that is that coming out okay so we got the legs and the wing I'm going to tighten these this up ready to receive the main hackle Move that stalk. Okay, the main hackle. Uh, it's a black hackle, obviously. I've got a very fine one here, which came from a saddle cape. And I'm going to put this on. It's, um, because it's a fine hackle, it's the right size, I will be giving it quite a few winds. So that's on there. And now I'm going to trace that stalk, get that stalk back because I don't need to pull out when I wind it and I come back okay I've got to get that stalk see it hanging there so I'm going to nip that out now that's a stalk out and I wind the hackle trout like this fly and I've, I've got to tell you that the um, the techniques tying this fly are transferable to other flies uh, so sort of if you can tie this you'll tie other flies hackle ply is ready in case I need it I don't think I will no that's okay I'll give it one more because it's a fine hackle I've given it quite a few winds I'll secure that hackle shorten my silk otherwise it'll hit the camera bear with me right two winds just to hold it nip the hackle off and I'll get my little cotton bud ready to push these hackles back if I need to and I'll just finish off the head I'm securing everything down now and I'll position the legs and the wing in a moment or two I'm going to put on my usual whip finish 
do like this, I trap it and I take this top one here and I wind it around three or four times. That's two, this is three, I'll give it four. Get my dubbing needle into the loop and I'll draw it up. And now I'll cut the silk open to a gape and just push. And the silk is cut. Now, just have a look at these legs a moment. My dubbing needle, where I was holding the fly, so that I can show it to you. One or two little fibres there. I'll nip them away before I varnish the head, but they won't really matter at all. Okay, right, that's the completed fly. I'm just going to varnish the head and um, clear the eye of the hook. When I'm varnishing the head on a smallish fly, I take some off my little varnish brush and I put it on and I give a bit of a roll like this and I'll probably put some on tomorrow when the varnish is dry okay top back on the varnish that's important it's been knocked over more than once now I'm going to get a feather to clear the the eye an old hackle up through bottle brush effect clears the eye okay now that's that's the fly really when you see a completed fly like this tied by yourself you will understand why fly tying is so rewarding and and, and, and delightful uh, but best of all is the satisfaction you get when you catch a fish on one of your own creations. And I can tell you, if you're fishing in uh, mid-April to mid-May, or again in September, when the hawthorn flies are about, you've got a very good chance of, of catching a trout on this fly. Trout like it. All I can say is, thank you for tuning in, and I'll be looking out for you next time on Peter Ross on Fly Tying.